In this video, we're just going to have a look at the registration magic login form because it's a lot more than a login form and it has quite a few settings. So if you're using the re registration magic, um, these are some of the uh, options that you're going to have. So when it comes to the login form, and we'll have a look at that here under build, you'll see that you really only have two options. You have a username and a password and there's nothing else that you, you can really do. You can edit the... Um, fields here so you can change you know username the placeholder you can change you can add an icon and it's very easy just to then select an icon and uh, you're pretty much done um, and then you have some advanced settings here like adding a css class so nothing major but just a couple of things that you can um, use to spruce it up a bit and then we have the um, actual password field. So once again, pretty basic um, as far as what's available there. Um, a couple of settings like, you know, the icon again. So we could, you know, just put in any icon there for now. And yeah, um, that's about it. Um, advanced is also just a CSS style. So Nothing of any real significance in the login fields. Uh, right, so let's just, uh, what I'm going to do then is head back to the dashboard. And then we're just going to have a look at um, some of the configurable things. So the first one is uh, redirection. So what do you want to happen when users log in now the nice thing here is that you can actually define them by user role so you can set a common login say shop uh, we're going to redirect you to the shop page and then always redirect the admin users to the dashboard so that's great um, and then uh, after login redirect the user to and in this case just the shop but um, what's more important here is that you have this role based option and here it's really simple because you can come in and say it's a shop manager and the sh shop manager you can redirect. So after login, redirect the user to and we can have a look at where to redirect the, the um, shop manager and then also then after the logout. So after um, logout, you know, maybe to the shop and then the shop manager. So let's also have them on the shop page. So quite easy then to redirect individual user roles to those specific areas. Just one other redirection that we might want to have a look at here is when you log in, you'll see here you've got make role. And here you can turn on um, role specific redirection. So once again, um, this is a new role that was created so this make role is actually a test role that was created a custom role and you can once again determine where they go to after the login so after the login you maybe to my account and when they log out maybe to the shop so the make role was a custom role it's not a default within the program uh, then we have the recovery password and uh, here, once again, you have the options to select a couple of things. Now, you have um, the link anchor text, like lost your password, and then we have the password recovery page. Now, the password recovery page is a page that is created when registration magic is installed. And to show you what that looks like, I think we can just flip across to uh, that page, and you'll see here that um, if I'm here on the login page, I can't remember my password, I hit the lost password, and now I'm on the password recovery page. So the page is set up specifically um, for that purpose. If I was to go back, um, that's opened in a new tab. So let's say I enter um, something here, and it's obviously not the correct password, and I select login. Now I have this uh, error message that pops up and says, um, you know, wrong password. Do you want to try again? Lost your password. I click on that and I'm redirected to the same password recovery page. So it works um, either way for either login attempt. So that's the password um, recovery um, page. 
So let's just head back then to the um, settings here. Right, so that's the password recovery. And then, of course, you have the email that will follow when somebody clicks on that link to say that they um, would like to reset their password. So um, you'll be sent a link. So you'll re soon receive an email with the recovery password link. Thank you. Email not found. Okay, that would be the message coming up to say that we didn't find your um, email address. So maybe you're not a registered member of this website or perhaps try a different um, uh, email address. Then we have the new password label, repeat password, um, and then change password. So that's the form that you would fill in to make the changes. And if the passwords don't match, you can enter your password match error. And if they successfully change their password, there's a successful message as well. And then um, if somebody clicks on the in invalid um, password reset link, then there will also be an error. So you say you need to reset your password. You get sent an email with a link. You click on the link. You reset your password. If that link is incorrect, this is the message that will be presented on the screen. Um, there is an option then to um, define the token, uh, the token to be used during the reset, and then there is also an invalid token error. So um, the token um, needs to be activated as an option for uh, um, being used in password uh, recovery or setup. Um, you can also set how long you want the password uh, recovery link to be available. So 24 hours, maybe just 12 hours or 8 hours. Um, and then there's a link expiry error to say, look, your link has expired and you'd have to apply for a new link. And then there is also the rede redirect default password link. So that's the... Um, uh, the redirect the default password recovery page within WordPress. But if you're using the plugin and you've set up your password recovery page, then it's always nicer perhaps then to manage or handle all these password issues from the, the, the website perspective that the customer is used to. So I would say then just keep it on the front end. There's also the two-factor authentication. So that just makes for a new uh, kind of more secure process. And uh, here we have to just turn that on. And once it's turned on, you can decide if it's going to be an alpha numeric code or a numeric code, the one-time pin, what's the length, the expiry, um, allow the user to regenerate the pins, um, the label, the custom message above the one-time pin field, allow resending maybe you don't allow them to resend you can and you can also put in a limit so you know if they haven't got it in three one-time pin resends then maybe there's an issue and then also how many times you can attempt to input a one-time pin that you receive and five should be way more than what is required before maybe having to reset and request a new one-time pin um, and then you can also specify which roles to apply the two-factor authentication and turn it off for admin. So if you're specifying a role, it's just simply click, 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 and you're done. And that would be applied then to those, ro those roles. Um, if not, then you can set it on all roles except maybe for the admins. So that's the two-factor authentication, which is great. It's all part of the plugin. And then you have the email templates that will be used to send information to the customer. So uh, the nice thing is that the templates are all pretty much made up. And it's really then just a case for you to go in and make some fine edits. So you've got the failed login attempts. You've got the one-time password, the password reset. And then there are also emails to the admin. So these are the emails to the user. And these are the emails to the admin so that you're aware of any failed login attempts. So that's the email templates. Um, yeah, as far as the login box goes, so that's just a short code that you paste in on the page. Um, just to show you what would happen if you go to the login page and you're already logged in. 
So if I head over here to the login page and I'm going to view, then you'll see that um, you wouldn't have this box here, but you'll see that it says login, welcome, my username. Um, I've got the link to my account and then I have the link to log out. So if you're already logged in or you've logged in and you stay on this page, those would be the options available to you. Right, so I'm just going to head back here. Um, right, so we had the login box. Um, then there's also the uh, login button, and that is um, more the widget, the login button widget. So it would be a login logout button. So if you log in, it'll mention logout. If you logged out, it will be to log in. And then in that widget, you can set the settings. So login method, is it a URL? Is it a pop-up? And the login view, what's on the button? And um, there's also an option here to display the, the user's information when they hover over the button. So yeah, just a couple of nice things that you can do then um, with a button on the website. Uh, once again, you have the uh, one-time pin. And we've already had a look at the uh, one-time pin. And then we also have this magic pop-up. The magic pop-up is this button over here. And in here, you'll see here that I have the log off option. And if I was logged in, I logged out, that would um, be a login button. So that's pretty standard. Um, so another nice little feature. You can then integrate your logins with any of these social services. So Facebook, Twitter, Windows Live, Instagram, Google, and LinkedIn. And as you um, would imagine, you go to enable, you enable. Um, some of these won't work unless you have an SSL running. But once you click on that button, it will then ask you just to enter the credentials depending on the social service. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have some analysis. So the nice thing is, is that you can see the number of login successes, login failures. Just gives you an idea of, you know, how many people are using your site as well. Um, there is also an option to retain logs, um, but uh, I generally set that to zero unless it's required. And then you have the user login. So if I go into an individual user, I'll be able to see um, their login details by user. So if I wanted to uh, follow up on that I could well that's pretty much um, the highlights then of the um, the login logout just uh, one other thing um, when the user logs in you'll remember that I just showed you the screen that they would see so this is the logged in view and here you can you'll recognize that top piece and then as you go down you can set um, the various options so you can see um, full name the avatar um, the greetings text uh, custom messages or whatever they might be the separator bar color that bar across there and then you've also got the display logout link so that's about um that's about it for the um for the login form um, on the right hand side here then just quickly uh, you'll have a summary here of the um, login and then over here you've got a short code copy and paste the number of fields the submit label if you want to change the label from login to something else uh, you can do it here very quickly and then also the number of records the stats if you want to download any of those records so very useful, everything from one-time pins to redirections, email templates, integrating social services, um, social platforms, and then even the stats and analytics. So all part of the package. So um, yeah, definitely worth taking a closer look. And this was all done with the premium version of Registration Magic. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, just having a look at that overview and thank you for watching.